It has been 600 days since a bomb went off on 2nd Avenue in downtown Nashville, and it still looks like this. Yeah. Metro leaders want to offer incentives to try and speed up the recovery. And a little boy killed on a Middle Tennessee playground. What we know this morning and how you can help the family of, of this little guy right here. And some locals along Music Row voicing concerns about short-term rentals. We're going to tell you about the frustration that they have taken directly to the Metro Council. Just after 8 o'clock here on your Wednesday morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Fox 17 News this morning. I'm Justin McFarland. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. Glad to be here for you, your live local news source through 9. Uh, we start this hour with an update to a story that we first brought you yesterday. Uh, Smyrna police confirm this is the five-year-old who died at a park in Smyrna, accidentally killed himself with a gun. It happened Monday night at the basketball courts at Lee Victory Park. The gun belonged to this little boy's dad. The gun had been in a backpack yeah. when the little boy found it. Smyrna police say Levante Williams found that gun in his dad's backpack while they had been out of the park. A GoFundMe now set up to help the family cover funeral expenses. Uh, it looks like they've raised just over $10,000 so far. If you'd like to help the family, we have a link on our website, fox17.com. Expenses for my baby's memorial is what that says. Well, it's been about a year and a half since the Christmas Day bombing rocked downtown Nashville in a very unexpected explosion that happened on Christmas Day. And the efforts to clean it up and rejuvenate Second Avenue continue to this very moment. Yeah, Metro Council members talking about incentives overnight to try to speed up some of the redevelopment. Fox 17 News Sydney Snow joining us live down there in the zone that Sydney still looks very much like a ghost town. Yeah. It really is, Jen and Justin. I mean, you probably just saw the car drive by me. They just opened this street up to traffic just a couple of months ago, actually. You can still see a lot of the damage behind me. So Metro Council is trying to speed this process up a little bit. They actually are discussing giving property owners and developers a tax break if they're able to restore these buildings and keep their historic nature. But again, we mentioned this has gone largely untouched other than to open this street to traffic. There is a little pedestrian walkway but you're still not right on the sidewalk there's still debris there you can see the windows and doors are still boarded up most buildings are still missing so a long way to go here but now metro council is trying to speed that process up take a listen this is our once in a lifetime opportunity to save these properties that mean so much to the character of, of Nashville. So the intent overall here is to keep it a very conservative program, but focus like a laser on those uh, immediate needs to ensure that we have that once in a lifetime opportunity to save them. So. Now you'll also remember that Metro Council voted to um, much of the original structures and materials that are still here that can be preserved. That's what they want these building owners to do and developers to do. They also have plans to restore Second Avenue and really connect it with the riverfront. But as of right now, there is no timeline on when any of this construction will start. We're live here on Second Avenue. I'm Sydney Snow, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Unbelievable that that damage remains uh, just like it was. Uh, since that explosion took place. Let's talk about your weather out there oh. this morning and uh, what was still that? what? It's still there. Still. Since All morning. 3 a.m. Yeah. I mean, when I came in, I mean, this this was this is what it's looked like all morning <laughs> in Putnam. There is some good news, and I will tell you that. Uh, the bad news is I can't see the tree line anymore, so the fog has intensified in Putnam yet again. The good news is the fog is lifting in Metro Nashville and the surrounding communities. So we're starting to see this fog lift. It just seems to want to continue to intensify, though, in Putnam County. Hey, new this hour, we now have a dense fog advisory. OK, this is through the nine o'clock hour here across all of Middle Tennessee. This means you need to reduce uh, your speed on the roadways, turn on those lights, give yourself a little extra stopping distance from the car ahead of you. I know it is midweek. You need to get to the office. Maybe you're running late. 
take it easy. This is not the day to really speed up on the roads with this visibility, especially if you are taking I-40 eastbound towards Cookville, towards Livingston, towards Putnam County, where the fog continues to intensify. The good news is our future fog forecast does show uh, the fog lifting over the course of the next hour. But of course, if you see any fog, go to my Facebook or my Twitter or my Instagram, send in those photos and videos because that actually really helps out on determining where the fog is truly the most intense. You can see that we're finally warming into the 70s from Nashville to Clarksville in the mid to upper 60s everywhere else. I'll show you where we end up for our daytime highs coming up in just a bit. Justin. All right, thank you, Zach. Let's take a look at your steer clear traffic as you get out there this morning. We're going to begin south of town. This is I-65 as you make your way towards Brentwood, towards Franklin is where this is, uh, giving a bit of a slowdown as you make your way out and about in that direction. Uh, you can see Metro Police along with TDOT all there attending to the leftovers of that crash there on the shoulder. Uh, you can always try to take Franklin Pike is the best way to steer clear. Uh, speaking of, uh, you see what's going on over here on the right? I do. That's a Metro police officer looking to be backing up there on the shoulder. I'm sure exactly what they're doing huh. uh, there in that area. They stopped. OK, I was like, are they trying to back up the entire ramp there? Yeah. But, you know, we'll see. Anyway, things are moving along just slowly there right. in that area. So following that crash out there in the Jolton area, uh, you can still see that red line right along New Hope Road in that area. Exit 35 uh, Clarksville to downtown at 71 minutes right now. This is why you can see the uh, leftovers of a multi car crash where uh, one THP officer following the gentleman back to his car after he's missing his front fender. Yeah. Clarksville Pike, the best way to steer clear. Rough start to the day. All right, some folks who live in one building along Music Row in Nashville are pushing back against more short-term rentals in their building. They've had enough. The people who live in Spence Manor at 7 Music Square East say their building is so attractive to all these people who want to do the short-term rentals because it's got history. History with Elvis Presley. Look at the guitar-shaped pool as well. I mean, can you imagine all the Instagram oh, man. posts that people make Nothing here? Nothing says Nashville like a guitar-shaped mm, swimming pool. <laughs> so this is the view from Google Maps from above. Uh, there are already some short-term rentals in this building that it's allowed in Spence Manor. But some people say they're causing all kinds of issues. Uh, it's just so out of control, and I like I like a lot of the people that have Airbnbs. I have nothing against it, but I don't want any more. We used to be two people in a room. You'd rent a room for two people. Now there's like 16 people living on floors and bunk beds, and it, it's a crazy house. I think what I'd like to do is go uh, talk to residents and potentially the applicant as well, um, and you know work on this a little more in the community before we consider it in the body. Uh, so I'm going to go back there and hand out a couple of cards and make sure we have the opportunity to come together on this before we uh, reconsider approval of it. So. so by the way, I did look up where this is out there. They're charging on Airbnb $164 a night mm -hmm. to stay in this particular building. Metro Council says they want to revisit this issue coming up a little bit later uh, and then try to come up with some kind of resolution mm -hmm. in Nashville short term rental task force who's coming up with brand new rules for short term rentals in the city will be meeting later today. We have an update this morning on a woman reported missing from Rutherford County where investigators say they found her remains and a lot of uh, pushback about the third grade testing requirement that's new to Tennessee. Could a test score keep your child back a grade? Why one of our state's top school districts is pushing back. And we want to take a live look along 2nd Avenue and uh, showing the damage that remains a year and a half after the Christmas Day bombing. Coming up in a few minutes, we're going to tell you what the city wants to do to try and get this area back on its feet a little bit faster. Four days only at Ashley's Labor Day Early Access Sale. Buy one, get one half off. Plus, get zero. Buy one.